You might have heard the news that Google has unveiled a new quantum chip called Willow. It's being hailed as a major breakthrough in the field of quantum computing. Some even claim that this chip serves as proof of parallel universes and that its ability to solve calculations at incredible speeds comes from operating across multiple universes simultaneously. Interestingly, even Google's official blog hints at this idea, sparking widespread discussions and debates. However, the true uniqueness of this chip has not been explained in most reports. What is commonly highlighted is this single fact. Willow solved a task in just five minutes that would take the world's most powerful supercomputer 10 septillion years. That is 10 to the power of 25 years, a figure unimaginably larger than the current age of the universe. But this raises some important questions. What exactly is the task that would take a classical supercomputer so long? Is it a real-world task? Moreover, what kind of applications is Google planning for the Willow chip? It is speculated that the chip could be used in fields like artificial intelligence, financial modeling, supply chain logistics, and the discovery of new drugs and materials. However, the truth is that Willow will not be used for any of these applications. This chip is not a commercial product. Additionally, its astonishing speed will not improve the performance of our personal computers, mobile phones, or the internet. Let me clarify. My intention is not to dismiss Willow's significance. There is no doubt that this chip represents a breakthrough in quantum computing that researchers have been waiting for over 30 years. But what exactly makes it so special? What are its real-world applications? And does it have any connection to parallel universes? These are the questions we will explore in this video. Hi friends, welcome to a brand new video on Science Simplified for All. Before we dive into the Willow chip, it is important to first understand the basics of quantum computing. This topic deserves a detailed video on its own, but for now, I will explain the basics briefly to save time. Classical computers operate using the binary system, which consists of only two digits, 0 and 1. This is similar to a bulb being either on or off. Using just these two numbers, Classical computers can represent everything we use today. Numbers, alphabets, colors, images, and more. In a binary system, a single digit is called a bit. Today, this is also referred to as a classical bit. A single classical bit can take only one of two possible states, either 0 or 1. With two classical bits, you can represent four possible combinations. 0, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, and 1, 1. However, at any given moment, two bits can represent only one of these four states. Now, let us talk about quantum computers. Unlike classical computers, quantum computers use quantum bits, or qubits for short. A qubit can be implemented using properties of particles like the spin of an electron or the polarization of a photon. That is, an electron's clockwise spin can be taken as zero and its anticlockwise spin as 1. But in addition to these two states, an electron can also exist in a combination of both spins simultaneously. This unique state is known as superposition. Similarly, qubits can exist in three types of states, the zero state, the one state, and a superposition state of 0 and 1. This additional capability of being in a superposition state is what makes qubits so powerful compared to classical bits. For instance, two classical bits can represent only one of these four states at a time. However, two qubits can exist in a superposition of all four states simultaneously. This means that with just two qubits, a quantum computer can process all four states at the same time. As the number of qubits increases, this advantage grows exponentially. For example, eight qubits can process 256 states at once. 16 qubits can handle 65,536 states. This allows quantum computers to perform vast numbers of calculations simultaneously. This is what makes quantum computers special. However, there is a challenge. The output of such calculation will be a superposition of all possible answers. To extract the correct result, 
quantum mechanics uses interference to amplify correct answers while suppressing incorrect ones. This method, however, works only for specific types of calculations. In short, quantum computers excel at solving specific kinds of problems, but they cannot perform all the tasks that classical computers can. This is why a direct comparison between quantum and classical computers is not always meaningful. To measure the capability of quantum computers, a commonly used benchmark is a task called Random Circuit Sampling, RCS. RCS is a type of calculation that quantum computers are particularly good at solving. However, it is extremely difficult for classical computers to handle. Because of this, when we compare the performance of quantum and classical computers using RCS, we often see results like a quantum computer solving a problem in five minutes that would take a classical supercomputer billions of years. But here is what we need to understand. Random circuit sampling is not a real-life task. Instead, RCS is a benchmark problem specifically designed to measure the capacity of quantum computers. It is not the kind of problem classical computers are ever required to solve in practical applications. So even if a quantum computer solves RCS extremely fast, it does not mean it can speed up the kinds of tasks that classical computers handle daily like running your computer, smartphone or the internet. In other words, quantum chips will not make your personal devices or internet faster. Naturally, this raises a question. If RCS is not a real-life task, why is it used to test quantum computers? The answer lies in its design. RCS is a task that mimics the kinds of problems we may want quantum computers to solve in the future. This makes RCS a good benchmark for evaluating the potential of quantum computers. Now the question is, if quantum computers cannot perform the tasks that classical computers handle, what kind of jobs will they be used for in the future? One of the most promising applications is the discovery of new chemical compounds. Take, for example, the lithium-ion battery, which is widely used today. It relies on specific compounds containing lithium. Now imagine we want to create a new type of battery that holds more charge and charges much faster. To achieve this, we would need to discover a completely new chemical compound. Traditionally, this would require years of experiments to test and refine different combinations of materials. However, with quantum computers, it is possible to simulate these compounds without physically creating them. The properties of any chemical compound are determined by the quantum states of the electrons within its molecules. Using a quantum computer, we can accurately calculate the quantum energy states of all electrons in a molecule and predict how these electrons will behave. This means we can predict the properties of a new compound through simulation before actually creating it. Only after confirming its potential via simulations would we need to synthesize it in the lab. Moreover, quantum computers can quickly test thousands of combinations to identify the most promising chemical for a given purpose. This application is not limited to batteries. Quantum computers could be used to develop new materials for any industry. They could even help create new drugs for diseases that currently have no cure. While classical computers are already used for similar simulations to some extent, they rely on approximation methods, which lack precision. Moreover, classical computers struggle to handle the complexity of large molecules and their interactions. In contrast, quantum computers excel at this task with unparalleled accuracy and speed making them invaluable for solving some of the most challenging problems in chemistry, material science, and medicine. Quantum computers are capable of solving certain specific tasks with incredible ease. They have immense potential in fields like artificial intelligence, finance, and logistics. Another area where quantum computers could have a significant impact is encryption. Encryption methods like RSA, which are widely used to protect personal and sensitive information, could potentially be broken easily by quantum computers. This has raised concerns in many sectors. However, it is important to note that quantum computers cannot break quantum-resistant encryption methods designed specifically for this new era of computing. In fact, 
quantum computing is expected to contribute significantly to advancements in encryption technologies, making them even more secure. Quantum computing advancements have also caused concerns in the cryptocurrency space, particularly for systems like Bitcoin. There are two main reasons for this. One, quantum computing could break the encryption methods that Bitcoin relies on. Two, quantum computers might make Bitcoin mining significantly easier, which could disrupt its value and overall security. These possibilities have raised concerns about the future of cryptocurrencies in a quantum computing-driven world. However, for now, quantum computers do not pose an immediate threat to Bitcoin. We will explore this point further by the end of this video. Now, let us explore the breakthrough that Google's Willow chip has made in the field of quantum computing. This is a somewhat challenging topic to explain, which is likely why it was not discussed in detail in most news reports. Let me try to simplify it for you. But I will need your full attention. Quantum computers work using the unique phenomena of quantum mechanics, such as superposition and entanglement. These phenomena, however, are extremely sensitive to external disturbances. Even a slight variation, such as a small magnetic field change or temperature fluctuation, can disrupt the quantum states of qubits and introduce errors in calculations. While it is impossible to completely avoid these errors, we can work to reduce them and correct errors as they occur. This process, known as quantum error correction, is a fundamental part of quantum computing. To achieve error correction, the technique currently used involves employing multiple physical qubits to represent a single logical qubit. For example, instead of using just one qubit for storing data, several physical qubits work together to ensure that any errors can be identified and corrected quickly. Let us break it down further. The qubit you need for a calculation is called a logical qubit. The hardware qubits used to represent this logical qubit are called physical qubits. Imagine you have a quantum chip with 90 qubits. All of these are physical qubits. If quantum computing had no errors, all 90 physical qubits could directly be used for calculations, meaning you would have 90 logical qubits. But in reality, errors are common in quantum computing. To mitigate these errors, about 9 physical qubits might be required to represent one logical qubit. In this case, a chip with 90 physical qubits would provide only about 10 logical qubits for calculations. Even so, this method makes quantum error correction possible. However, this approach comes with a significant challenge. Every physical qubit has a chance of introducing errors. So, while increasing the number of physical qubits helps with error correction, it also creates more opportunities for errors to occur. This means that simply adding more physical qubits does not guarantee improved error correction. In fact, for many years, the rate of new errors introduced by additional qubits was higher than the rate at which errors could be corrected. This made scaling up quantum computers nearly impossible. This limitation was a major obstacle to the development of quantum computing. Even with larger quantum chips, the increasing error rates negated any benefits. Google's Willow chip marks a major breakthrough in this area. With the Willow chip, as the number of qubits increases, error correction happens faster than new errors are introduced. This means that the error rate decreases as more qubits are added. This is the game-changing innovation introduced by Willow. It resolves a problem that quantum computing has faced for nearly 30 years. Now, with future quantum chips, adding more qubits will not proportionally increase error rates. This advancement not only makes quantum computers more scalable, but also opens the door to building larger, more powerful quantum chips without being limited by error management challenges. The Willow chip is a prototype created as part of research efforts in quantum computing. Its primary goal is to facilitate experiments in quantum computing and to use the insights gained to develop more advanced quantum chips in the future. It is not designed for any practical commercial applications at this stage. The Willow chip is said to have a capacity of 105 physical qubits. However, the exact number of logical qubits that can be represented using these physical qubits has not been specified. 
to perform the kind of real-world applications we discussed earlier using quantum computers, we would need chips with thousands of logical qubits. For instance, breaking Bitcoin's encryption would require a chip with over a million logical qubits. Achieving such a level of quantum computing power is still a distant goal. For now, quantum computing poses no immediate threat to the security of Bitcoin or other encryption-based systems. As more advanced quantum chips are developed in the future, they will not just address the applications we envision today. These chips will enable us to discover new possibilities and perform tasks we have not yet imagined. Entirely new branches of technology could emerge, driven by the unique capabilities of quantum computing. Human history has always shown that innovative technologies open doors to unprecedented opportunities, and quantum computing will likely follow the same path. Now, let us address an intriguing question. What is the connection between Google's Willow chip and the concept of parallel universes? Some explanations suggest that the Willow chip's incredible speed in solving problems is because it performs a vast number of calculations simultaneously across multiple parallel universes. This idea has sparked widespread discussions and debates. It is true that the Willow chip can perform many calculations in parallel. However, this is not unique to the Willow chip. It is a property of all quantum computers. This capability arises from the quantum phenomenon of superposition, where qubits can exist in multiple states simultaneously. But does this mean parallel universes exist? The majority of scientists would say no. Quantum mechanics is a branch of science which heavily relies on underlying mathematical framework. Many have tried to interpret the physical meaning of its math. This has led to several theoretical interpretations. One such interpretation is the many-worlds interpretation. According to this theory, quantum phenomena, such as those utilized in quantum computing, could be explained by the idea that all possible outcomes occur, each in a different universe. For example, in a double-slit experiment, if an electron passes through the left slit, one could argue that in another universe, the same electron passes through the right slit. Similarly, in Schrodinger's cat experiment, if the cat is dead in our universe, it may be alive in another. While this interpretation provides a possible explanation, it is important to note that there is no experimental evidence to support the existence of parallel universes. The same applies to the Willow chip. Its speed and computational abilities are rooted in the principles of quantum mechanics which do not require the existence of parallel universes to explain its performance. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like and share it. For more such content, subscribe to this channel and enable the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.